Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George. We're all George. So the market is looking pretty good today. And I'm going to make a case why Bitcoin is about to explode. There's just so many good reasons right now. So strap on and let me tell you. Smash the like, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell to get notified of all my streams. Three a day. And make sure you follow me on social media, CryptosRUs.com. And a brand new Cryptos R Us Clips. Make sure you subscribe. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. I already streamed this morning, obviously, but there has been even more development since then. Very good stuff coming out about Bitcoin, and I am excited. Very excited. Not only that, I do have some stuff to share with you about this brand new NFT marketplace from Coinbase and ApeCoin. What's going on with the ApeCoin, right? Um, so you can see right now Bitcoin is at 41.4, so a little bit lower than this morning when I was streaming. It's about 42,000. Now we're coming back up, you know, about 41.4. Overall, you can see the trend is still upwards. We are still right below. We are right below this 45.6, and that is what I'm looking forward to. I believe that we have a good shot of making the 45.6 by the end of this week. And if we could do so, then we'll be back right before, uh, right back to before when, you know, Bitcoin was looking like it was going to break into the 50s, right? We are breaking up a little bit. Let's see if Bitcoin continues. There's still a lot of, of course, a lot of external factors at play, but we know Bitcoin is the solution for all of the problems that we're seeing today with inflation, with hyperinflation, with fiat devaluation, with uh, censorship, with regulations, with uncertainty, with, I mean, there's just a lot, a lot. You guys know, right? And I will get to some of those points in a little bit. But let's start out with Coinbase. Uh, this was just announced. Coinbase launches their NFT marketplace finally. It's in beta mode. This has been hyped up for, I don't know, for a long time. Many, many, many months. Maybe even over a year. And it is finally out now. Right now, they're claiming zero fees for a limited time. I don't know what the fees will be later on, right? And I, I don't know, just looking through it, it has some of the bigger collections out there like World of Women, Doodles, um, they do have the apes on here as well. So, I mean, it overall seems like, I mean, it, it looks very similar to OpenSea, right? I mean, it's just, you know, that's, that's what it seems like. And you can't store this on the Coinbase wallet. The Coinbase wallet is different than Coinbase itself. Coinbase wallet is a non-custodial wallet that you can download. It has a close relationship with Coinbase. However, you don't have to use Coinbase with the wallet. And anything that you buy here can be stored within the Coinbase wallet. Um, but of course, you could. these are all ETH-based. This is all Ethereum-based, so you can't store it on any wallet that you want. Um, so rumors about you know the, the NFT marketplace being on top of, say, Polygon or being on top of Solana. Seems like that's not the case. This is still on Ethereum. Everything is on Ethereum right now, right? Um, so I don't know. I don't know if this is going to do much for Coinbase because obviously other exchanges already came out with their NFT marketplace. You know, FTX has their own. Crypto.com has their own, right? Um, even KuCoin coming out their own. So Coinbase, of course, is the biggest exchange in the U.S. and one of the biggest exchanges in the world. They will have a ton of visibility, right? But the way things are listed on exchanges is different because like all the other exchanges, uh, collections have to be verified first. You can't, as a normal creator, just upload an AFT. And I think it's the same way with Coinbase. Their goal, their goal look at all the applicants and then only approve who they, who they like. And this is one of the reasons why they, the NFT marketplace on the other exchanges have not done well because a lot of people can't get verified, nor do they want to get verified, right? Um, so we'll see. This is still in beta mode. 
maybe they change their mind later or maybe they add in other chains or other compatibility i don't know maybe to add solana nfts in there but right now it's just ethereum based all right i want to start with that because that is actually pretty big news that just came out um okay now what about this explosion that i that i'm hinting at okay bitcoin actually starting to come up a little bit more yes let's see if we could have the george effect and get back up right to forty-two thousand. i mean there's a lot of things going on right now i've mentioned about australia coming out the very first bitcoin spot etf that was just announced i believe yesterday but here's the thing it's it's not gonna be the only one there's gonna be two more so next week we're gonna have three we're gonna have three bitcoin spot etfs open up in australia land with 35 million citizens that are all dying to get their hands on bitcoin right now of course there's a lot of people that have already bought bitcoin but australia's a big country and there are a lot of businesses and traders and institutions that all want to get in so this is going to be pretty big i believe starting next week but what's even bigger and this is what i cover this morning more in detail but there is a bitcoin spot etf that was just approved uh t cream okay but why this is important is because this was filed under a different act one that's different than all previous bitcoin future etfs and because of this because the sec is loosening their grip on these bitcoin etfs this is paving the way for a true bitcoin spot etf to open up and to be approved in the u.s i think this is absolutely huge too many people feel like the bitcoin spot etf is just not going to come anytime soon but i have a feeling it is going to come and get approved this year probably the grayscale bitcoin trust will be converted to a bitcoin etf and that will be the very first one i mean you can't gary already said he's under a lot of pressure to look at this right to to really really look at it and approve one basically and we have canada australia that has theirs and many other countries brazil is coming out there's a i mean at this point you can't there's no good reason not to allow one right you can't say well there's a lot of manipulation as and we can't control it well the same thing with gold gold is traded worldwide right we have gold etfs so you can't make that argument and the fact that bitcoin is holding very strong at 40,000 and all these other ETFs exist and they're not manipulating the market there's very little that Gary can say in terms of denying a true Bitcoin spot ETF so this also could be right around the corner I think the grayscale the grayscale application is I think in the next few months right so that could pave way for billions of billions of billions of dollars into bitcoin etf which will thus will have to buy bitcoin by the billions to to satisfy demand i mean it's it's going to be big it's going to be big so we have a lot of this going on okay but you know this is this is more like shares and funds and and wall street institutions what about anything else right i mean there's just a lot of buy signals also a lot of signals that indicate a bottom is here and bitcoin is about to move here's a new one i haven't heard of this one before but reserve risk so again this is measuring the reserves and we know that reserves on the exchanges are dropping so you look at this you look at the green mark and the red mark basically highlighting over the past you know 10 years with our up and downs and all the three cycles that we had right what are the best times to be buying bitcoin and the best times to be selling bitcoin and you can see the green area the further it drops right the more likely bitcoin is go flip and continue upwards and the red indicates a blow off top event when there's just you know the reserves are dropping or increasing i should say um and you can see that yeah those are times when bitcoin came down but look at where we are now right we're in the green once again 
And the thing is, we're different now versus before because of all the adoption and, and all the buying that has happened over the last few years. So you could see that even though Bitcoin is not down 85%, not down, you know, whatever percent, it is, it is now flashing by, right? And this is not the only indicator. There's many other indicators. Uh, take a look at this one, long-term holder versus short-term holder supply. Again, this is one of those things that measure how many new people are in the space versus just long-term holders, right? And again, you have this point where if you start seeing this change with long-term holders versus short-term holders, well, that usually means Bitcoin is about to head higher, right? There's just a million metrics right now, a million metrics that measure this. Here's another one that does help. Bitcoin's volatility, which sometimes we hate, but sometimes we love, slips to a 17-month low, over a year low, right? And this is a fantastic thing because many people can't handle the volatility. But many people can't handle Bitcoin going up 20% in a day and then down 15% and then up 10% and then down 20% and then up 30%. I mean, a lot of people can't handle that. Right now... It's as stable as ever. And it's, I'll tell you from experience, that is true. Even back in 2020, we had some wild swings. I don't think people realize when we fell down that Black Swan event in March of 2020, we fell from 11,000 Bitcoin, okay, 11,000 Bitcoin to 3,800. You do the math. That was like a 60% drop in literally a day, okay? Think about that. That would be like Bitcoin falling from right now to 20,000 as I'm streaming. That is the equivalency of that time, right? Volatility was crazy, crazy before. And during 2018, 2019, 2020, we saw similar things where Bitcoin just like goes up and down and up and down. Right now, it's steady. And why is that? Because there's a lot more money in this space. We also have DeFi that helps lock in liquidity, right? This is why I think DeFi and TVL is great. There's many things that have changed, right? So the fact that, yeah, the market seems like it's boring. Bitcoin may not be moving, right? This is a fantastic thing. This is a fantastic thing. And when it is ready to move, it's going to move. But this also helps support this narrative. And it's all this stuff. 200-week moving average whenever Bitcoin hits it. It tends to go on a parabolic run afterwards like previous cycles. We just hit it not too long ago, end of March. And now we're past that, right? So again, all these things, all these things, I think, indicate that, yeah, Bitcoin is ready. It's definitely ready. And even if we have to wait a little bit longer, we have to wait a few more weeks, a few more months, right? The next move is coming. You could just see it. The metrics tell you. The buying tells you, right? The adoption tells you everything is lining up right now. So it's definitely very, very, very exciting. Very exciting to be in crypto. All right. Now, there's one man. There's one man, though, that is not a fan of Bitcoin. Okay. And you you may be thinking Peter Schiff. But no. No, I'm talking about our friend Brad Garlinghouse. Who believes that Bitcoin maxis are holding down the industry back, including XRP. Uh, He believes that tribalism is holding back the entire marketplace. uh, And he believes that, yeah, this maximalism is uh, fracturing the representation of crypto overall, right? You You know, we have this term, Bitcoin maxi. How about we start... Let's create our own. Let's call XRP Mini. Does that make sense? <laughs> uh, so rather than be a Bitcoin Maxi, you want to be a, a XRP Mini? Does that make sense? I think that makes sense, right? But anyways, uh, you know, I, I'm not a fan of Bitcoin Maxis either. But, but uh, I don't think that the tribalism or the maxis are holding back the entire industry, okay? We still know that Bitcoin is the big dog. Bitcoin is leading the way, 
right? It's the most widely known crypto. It's the biggest crypto. Of course, um, you're going to have a lot of people that, that just stick with Bitcoin. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. They just, they're not aware of other things. Or they are, but they choose to just stick with what they know. And that's okay, right? But we know that all coins serve their purpose. Layer 1s, Layer 2s, DeFi, um, the uh, decentralized uh, bridges and lending and all these things that exist now. There's hundreds of billions of liquidity locked into them. You can't say that it's a fad. It's going to go away. It's not going to go away. NFT marketplaces, right? So it's just it's just early. It's just early. But Brad, not a fan of Bitcoin Maxis. Not a fan. You know, you guys know I love XRP. You guys know. You guys know I love him. Um, all right. What else is there? ApeCoin. ApeCoin is going ape. You know what? Uh, it is up by 55% the last few days, up over 20% today. Although even though it's up so much, it's still lower than its previous high. So it's not like it's, you know, surpassed its previous highs. However, the reason why it's going up is because there are a couple things rumored. Number one is if you are a board ape or mutant ape holder, rumors are you will be airdrop some land for their upcoming metaverse. That is why the floor price on both have skyrocketed. If you look at mutant apes, their their floor price is like thirty three ETH. They used to be twenty something, and board uh, apes are like one twenty one thirty. So there's that. But number two is it's rumored that you can only buy land with ape coin. Okay, and it's rumored it's gonna be like six hundred ape coin per per plot of land, around ten thousand dollars, something like that. So and it's gonna be the currency of this new metaverse which makes sense right why you wouldn't say you're gonna make eth the currency you want to make it your the currency right with the with ape coin so that is the reason why it's going up right that is the reason why it's going up so a lot of people are very excited about it i've been saying i've been wanting to buy ape for a long time i just can't get myself to plop down you know, at the time, it was like 70 ETH. Now it's like 130. I'm like, forget about it. Maybe a mutant because you're still getting benefits by holding on a mutant name. But yeah, that's the reason why. And you know what? A lot of Ethereum whales, they're buying into ApeCoin. In fact, before Ethereum whales used to buy a whole lot of sheep, that has changed to ApeCoin. So there are a ton of Ethereum whales just buying up all the ApeCoins they can right now. And so that explains that explains why ApeCoin is going up. Uh, lastly, I did see this. It has to do with Ethereum. Jack Dorsey is also not a fan of Ethereum. Jack Dorsey, we know, is a Bitcoin maxi. But he's never really attacked Ethereum up until now. So with all the whole Twitter takeover bid from Elon, right? Vitalik, I guess he chimed in saying that we have to be careful we don't want these ultra-rich billionaires to control our freedom of speech and so forth. And then Jack Torsey said, well, you know, uh, if we're building on Ethereum, um, there may be one or many points of failure. But he didn't elaborate what those points of failures are. We, I don't know. But it just seems like he's, he's fighting back. He didn't like Vitalik attacking his bud, Elon, I think. <laughs> Even though... I mean, Jack soon will have nothing to do with Twitter, so I don't know why he's defending it. But yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but just thought I'd bring that up. And if you're a Net Netflix shareholder, you're probably crying today. You're probably crying. Well, it was, it's a little bit better, but Netflix crashed 37% this morning. It's still down 35%. Still not, not, a, not a pretty sight. Uh, in case in case you're a Netflix holder. All right. Uh, outside of that, that's pretty much it. You know what? Today, overall, I don't care what CMC says, even though, well, now I flipped in green, so that's better. But <laughs> the market is still in recovery mode. We're not fully recovered. I know that. That means there's plenty of buying opportunities still. A lot of great projects, right? But I do believe that this next leg up this next wave whatever you want to call it will drive us higher 
past our previous highs and head towards a new high. Everything is indicating it. I just feel it too. I just feel it. It's coming, right? But everything is being weighed down by recession fears, housing fears, warfare fears, regulation fears. I mean, there's a lot of fears out there, right? Clouds of uncertainty, but we will get through it. We will get through it. All right, let's do some Q&A. All right, let me scroll up. Let me see. Oh, man. Uh, someone said, I believe you are Shatoshi. I appreciate that, but I am not. I'm not smart enough to be. But I'm carrying on his message, hopefully in a good way, because I, I do believe. I do be believe in Bitcoin. Um, thoughts on thoughts on Solana Pay? It looks like it'll be a really good payment system or payment network on top of Solana. It could be. It could be. The thing is about payment, Louis. Thank you. The thing about payment networks is um, there's a lot of them out there. We're not limited to one, right? So I, I haven't used Solana Pay, haven't really looked at them, but I'm aware of many others that are being developed and many that are out right now. So um, there's a lot out there and there's not a whole lot of usage. That's the thing. And the reason being, there's no one that really wants to spend their crypto right now, right? People are buying crypto as an investment or as a trade, but they're not really buying it to use as a payment form, right? So that's why I think, actually, if you think about what Strike is doing, I think it's kind of brilliant because, you know, Jack Mullers, I think he realizes that a lot of people don't want to spend their crypto. If they want to, sure, you could do so. But most people just want to spend their fiat, right? Fiat is great for spending. Um, but why not utilize the network, the Lightning Network, you know, a decentralized network, right? I think that's that's smart. So I think these pay systems, these payment networks, I mean, right now they're concentrated on just using crypto to pay, right? But if you make it make a system where it could ride, say, on top of, say, Solana in this case, but you're still using fiat to purchase for things, I think that would be, I don't know, even better. Because I think most people want to spend fiat. Most people do not want to spend crypto. I don't know if that... That explanation helps. That's my overall thoughts. Um, what are your views on Blockbend.io? They offer a cross-chain anonymous mixer and have just announced anonymous swap. I don't like mixers because I just feel like uh, they're used for all the wrong reasons. And anonymous swaps and anything else that like that, Kirian. Um they get a lot of scrutiny and most likely to go get shut down, uh, especially if they're in a very heavy regulated country like the U.S. and North Korea, Japan, and anywhere else, right? I just don't. I'm not very into them at all. Um, Matic, big news on Friday. I don't know what the big news is. I, I don't know what's going to be announced. I have no idea. Uh, Chama says Solana Pay will kill Visa and MasterCard. I think, yeah, that, that's greatly exaggerated. And, you know, I just got done mentioning about riding on top of a network. You know, Visa and MasterCard, if they want to survive, they can just transist their network to be on top of a chain too if they wanted to, right? Um, we'll see. We'll see. I saw a chart showing Bitcoin's next all-time high won't hit again until 2024, 2025. Do you see any truth to this chart? Nicholas, do you know why? 
It's 24, 2025, because that's using the old four year cycle, um, you know, pattern. Because the next halving event is 2024. And traditionally speaking, you have a parabolic rise after a halving event, right? So that's why that chart probably showed that. And it could be true, but I don't believe we're following the same four year cycles like before. We just, we're not. We're not, right? So it could, we could still have a tremendous run then. But in the meantime, I still think we're going to have a tremendous run before then too, right? So that's, that's why some charts, you know, chart, a lot of charts, almost every single chart, every single indicator, every single moving average is based on what has happened in the past, right? History doesn't always repeat. It tends to rhyme, but sometimes they just don't rhyme because things change. The environment has changed. The, the whole system, ecosystem has changed. And it certainly has. Um, I don't know if you guys like that term, XRP mini. Rather than a Bitcoin maxi, a Ripple mini. <laughs> Does that make sense? It actually sounds pretty good. Ripple mini. Uh, CRO drop interest on stable coins from 10% to 6%. Wondering if others are going to lower their rates, if liquidity rises. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. Um, you know, crypto.com has to watch out because they're also, they have a big presence in the U S and we know that the SEC is going after all the lending projects, right? The ones that are giving out high interest. Um, attack BlockFi and Celsius. I think they're going to probably attack Gemini, Voyager next. And Crypto.com could be in the radar too. It could be the reason, that's the reason, because they want to start uh, getting people out, right? I, just speculating, but that could be a reason. Happy 420. Uh, funny you don't mention XRP is already being used by MasterCard and Visa. <laughs> no, they're not. No, they're not. They're partnered. They're partnered back from 2017. And since then, not one peep about them using the XRP ledger for any transactions. You know why? Because they're not using the XRP ledger. <laughs> None of them are using the XRP ledger. Oh, man. Um, Nexo is overseas, but they could still get hit, right? I think the New York attorney, the New Jersey district attorney told them to cease and desist before. But, you know, but they're overseas. Maybe the SEC is not going to target them right away. My other partner, Vald, they're overseas. They're not going to be targeted right away. Um, but I guess if you're a credit investor, you don't have this problem. Because if you're a credit investor, you can still earn interest. If you're overseas, you can still earn interest. It's just for U.S. right now. Um... Please don't play that educational video. Or did you say please play that educational video? Well, since so many people demand it, I'll have to. Um, Tiberius, I do appreciate it. I think uh, Ben Cohen is a good guy too. Uh, are you bullish on VeChain? Yes, very bullish on VeChain. Um, thoughts on Sandbox? Land, could it be worth it? Yes, but um, there's so many being sold right now, right? I think how Sandbox land is going to be worth it is if you can build something really cool on it. So if you can use it, then yes, I think it will be, it'll be worth it. If you're trying to buy and hold you know, for the future, it could also work because obviously there's only so much land, but you, you probably have to hold on for a long, 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 long time, long time. Um, 
Will Cardano be useful after the, the new hard fork? Well, Cardano, you know, there's more dApps coming on board, especially DEXs. So there's another one that came out. Their TVL is starting to come up a little bit. But yeah, I think any hard fork that helps them scale at this point will definitely be beneficial because Cardano right now can't process that many transactions. So if they do have this new hard fork that will help them scale and add on some side chains, right? Uh, that will definitely help them. Do you think May will be another? Uh, do you think this May will be another sell May walk away month for crypto? No, because April is supposed to be very very bullish for crypto overall and right now it's not really so bitcoin and crypto they, they kind of just do our own thing it doesn't always repeat follow previous patterns right in your opinion which will be top three performance of 2022 from the current crypto portfolio um yeah i would i would still maintain you know my top two I think right now is Terra and Avalanche, but if I had to add a third one in there, um, probably XRP. No, I'm I'm just kidding. No, not XRP. I don't know. I, I would throw something like a wild card. I like Polygon and Cosmos, but I'm gonna throw like a wild card like Near because Near is is showing similar similarities to like Solana back in 2021. So I would say those three, but there's many others, many many others. Who knows, like. There's a lot of L1s out there that we haven't really focused on recently, like Phantom and Harmony and and uh, even the ones, you know, from back in the day, like Neo and Iota and Zillica. I mean, there's a lot out there. A lot of them can make tremendous movements this year. Um, a lot of them have a lot of things going on and metaverses. Metaverses are starting to be big, too. Um, yeah. I left 3600 in Sheeb, been thinking about it, selling for a BDC. Oh, I thought this was a, one of those stories where, where you go say, oh, I left 3600 in Sheeb, and now it's worth like 30, $36 billion. I, I thought it was going to be one of those stories. I'm down at least 20000 on Sheeb. Should I wait for Sheeb or buy Bitcoin? There's no answer. There's no right or wrong answer to that. Okay, um, You have to decide. I can't tell you. But, you know, Sheeb has the potential to come up very, 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 very quickly, right? So looking at how much you're down right now, if you're calculating how much Bitcoin has to go up before you get back in the green, you're going to have to wait a while, right? But Sheeb has the potential to move very fast, so it can come back up, right? But ultimately, you have to decide what you want to do. Do you want to continue to hold on Sheeb or do you want to continue to hold on the greatest store of value that we have today, right? Maybe you diversify. Maybe you don't have to flip all of it. Maybe you just do a little bit of it. Or maybe you just start buying more Bitcoin to balance our portfolio. There's many ways to handle it, but ultimately you have to decide what you want to do. It's a tough, it's a tough, tough decision. Uh, is E2.0 e released today? No. I don't know why you think that. Uh, DJ, <laughs> Dentacoin, Phil, I 100% I forgot about Dentacoin until you just mentioned it. Wow. Uh, how many people don't do any research whatsoever, just be reading the chat? I mean, that's, you, you can't fault those people, right? There's a lot of people that's coming into this space. They watch me, they watch other people because they want to learn, but they don't really know how to get started. And it's, you know, it's, it's tough. It's tough. I, I know how it feels. It took me many, 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 many years to get to where I am today, right? But it's kind of the same way like with NFTs right now, right? I go into, I'll go into, you know, an NFT shop. I go to open seas. There's millions of NFTs. It's like, how do I know which one is good? How do I know which one has potential, right? Who created all these? What do they do? What's their utility, right? There's a lot to learn. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's overbearing. But you just got to take it one step at a time, day to day. When it comes to crypto, pick one. Pick one that you think is good. But don't just pick one and buy it. Pick one and start learning more about it. Like, why is Ethereum number two? Like, what's the history behind it, right? Why is it so good? Why is it 
at 368 billion market cap, right? What's Ethereum 2.0? What does moving from proof of work to proof of stake? What does that actually do? How do they plan on scaling? Who's Vitalik, right? I mean, these are things that you need to research. That's just the example, but it, it's, it goes the same with all these other ones. Um, <laughs> yeah, you could buy a Porsche with the Shiba. I don't know if anyone contacted that Porsche dealership that I mentioned yesterday. Is they take Shib, Doge, even Bitcoin, but they have one new car on the lot. And unfortunately, a lot of dealerships are like that. There's like five cars on a lot and they're all over msrp right so the car market just kind of sucks car market sucks uh bitcoin is still holding at 41.3 entire market cap still kind of holding barely in the red get kind of in the green u.s market nasdaq is still down netflix is still being hammered this is no good no good for for netflix fans um all right guys I think that's it I'll let you guys go overall a lot of stuff a lot of stuff happening you got some etfs about to come out next week the u.s i think is on the verge of allowing a bitcoin etf to come through right you got all the metrics and everything that's showing you that bitcoin is ready ready to move and i am here waiting for it to happen right all right, smash the like, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell and also follow my brand new Crypto Us Clips channel. The URL is in the description. And I'll see you guys tonight, 8.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right, take care, guys. And since so many, so, so, so many have requested for me to play this XRP educational video, I will do so right now. What do you think about Ripple? Well, I mean, I think it's too centralized, but I definitely want to meet Chris Larson. <laughs> <laughs>